Last time, we found that systems of equations in row echelon form are easy to solve. This time around, we are going to start on so how do we solve a system that is not in the row echelon. And the basic idea is to somehow or other transform the system of linear equations to an equivalent row echelon system. And what we mean by that equivalent system is a system that has the exact same solutions as the original system, but is now in row echelon form, where we know how to solve it. And just to emphasize how to show that systems are equivalent, we need to show that the first system can be transformed into the second system and back again. So let me give you an example of this. The first example here. I have a system, it consists of two equations in two unknowns. And it actually has a solution if you want to plug in, you'll find that x equals 1, y equals minus 1 does work for that system. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the second equation. So I give them names, row 1 and row 2 in our matrix is how I come up with the R's for those names. Now, what I'll do to change this is I'll keep the first equation the same. So 3x plus 2y equals 1, 3x plus 2y equals 1. My rule to change from the first equation to the second equation is that I'll replace the second row by what used to be the second row minus the first row. So 5x minus 3x, that's 2x. y minus 2y is minus y. 4 minus 1 is 3. Any x and y that satisfies the first equation and the second equation, if I add those equations up uh, into this system here, it still has to satisfy this second system. So a solution for the first system is also a solution for the second set. How about the reverse? Any solution in the second set is that a solution in the first set? We have to be able to go back. So we need to show that we can reverse this problem. Let's start with the second set. 3x plus 2y is equal to 1. 2x minus y is equal to 3. And if I pick a solution for this set, if I can do a transformation so that the solution stays the same, the new system will have that same solution as well. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that new system by keeping the first row. And then the second row, I'll reverse what I'd already done. Before that, I'd taken row 2 minus row 1, but I kept row 1. Right? So I still have row 1. So I know my new row 2 here, if I add row 1 back into it, I should get back to this previous system. And so my original system got replaced with a new system, which in turn got replaced with the original system. I closed the loop. Any solution of this system is a solution of the second system. Any solution of the second system is a solution of the first system. So the two systems have the same solutions. Since uh, we closed that loop, any solution of one system must be a solution of the other. And so my systems are equivalent. Let's look at another example. So I start with my system and multiply the second equation by zero. So my new system is first equation stays the same. Second equation is zero times the second system. If I pick an x and a y that solves that first system, it still solves the second system. That hasn't changed. But now I can't go back again. Because from that second system, if all I'm telling you is that 3x plus 2y equals 1, you don't know what that first equation was. So now I have new solutions for this second system. For example, x equals 3, y equals minus 4. will solve that second system, but it doesn't solve the first system. I can't close the loop anymore. I can't go back to the first system. So I don't have the same number of solutions. So to make sure that my systems are equivalent, I have to do transformations and allow myself to close the loop. So the transformations that we can use that will guarantee we can close the loop, that we can undo them, we'll use the following thing. The first equation is simply take any one equation and add some constant times another equation to it. So replace the ith equation with, take the ith equation and add alpha times another equation to it. If 
I want to undo it later, if I still have the ith equation to undo it, I would have to take that ith equation and subtract alpha times rj to it. So as long as I have rj in both cases, in the first system and the second system, I can undo and I have equivalent systems. So the first operation is just replace a row with a row plus a constant times another row. The second operation that I can undo easily is interchanging rows. As long as I have to change two rows, I get a new system or a system that looks a little bit different. It's the same equations, but in different order. And I can go back by re-exchanging those same rows. The last operation that I want is to, that I notice that I can multiply an equation by some constant. And as long as the constant is zero, so I don't wipe out the equation, I can undo that by multiplying by one over that constant. Let's look at a couple of examples of how to use these operations. Uh, they're called elementary operations. So my first example here, I have a system of four variables, x, y, z, and w. I'll call the equations r1, r2, and r3. Now I'm going to do the following operations. r1, I'll keep the same. So r1 goes into r3. r3, I'll keep the same. R3 goes into R3. But for R2, I'm going to combine R2 with R1. This sum alpha that I'll choose specially so that I get zero in that combination. In fact, it turns out that if I take three times the first equation, I get three times two is six. If I add that to the second equation, six y minus six y is zero y. That will introduce a zero in this position. So what I want is to replace this row by this row plus three times the row above it. And is there an easy way to figure out what that number is that I have to multiply R1 by? Well, I want to get rid of the minus six, right? So if I look at that first equation, I would like to see plus six over here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll divide out that two. Now, Multiply the first row by one-half, that makes it 1 times y. And then if I multiply by 6, I get 6 times y. So it's the number I want to get rid of, that minus 6, make it negative because I want to add them in. So plus 6 divided by this multiplier, that's the multiplier that I'm going to apply to that row. So the value that I want to match, that minus 6, divided by the value uh, in the equation I want to use to get rid of that minus 6. What we end up with, therefore, is the first type of elementary operation, replacing a row by adding some multiple times another row to it. If I choose judiciously for that multiplier, if I can do that, then I can get rid of a variable in that current row. An example with the second elementary operation, with row exchange. Suppose I have my system here, and look at the second row. The second row reads 0 equals 0. So that second row is not really an equation of interest. I want to shuffle it to the bottom. I always transform into the same number of equations as before. Uh, so what I'll do, R1, I'll keep exactly where it is. But the new R2 is what apparently was the R3 equation. So I'll replace my new R2, I'll construct by simply copying in R3. And for R3, I'll copy in what currently is R2. So I'm interchanging the second equation and the third equation by saying the second equation is what's currently the third, the third equation is what's currently the second. Scaling a row, Start with an example here. I've got my three equations as before. But if I look at the first equation over here, I see a common multiplier of two. So I might as well get rid of it if I want. I can divide through by two. So what I'll do is I'll replace r1 by one half times r1. And I'll keep r2 the same, I'll keep r3. 
Now that I have my elementary operations, let's see how we can use these to simplify a system of equations to row echelon form. So we'll have a first approach to the algorithm. It turns out we will have some corner cases we'll have to take care of, but we'll get the basic idea down. We we'll call this the intermediate stage. We'll use the algorithm called Gaussian elimination, and we will use equations to illustrate what we mean. So, naively, without the corner cases. So, what shall we do? We want to reduce a given system of linear equations to an equivalent row echelon form system. We are going to run the following uh, operation. And it's easy if I simply show you the example first. So, here's my system. I've got a first equation over here. It has a leading variable x. I want to get rid of that x in each one of the equations below it. So I've selected that leading variable in the first equation. I'm going to dedicate that first equation. That's the only one that's going to have an x in it. That's the one I'm going to use to solve for the x. What I'm going to do next is R2. I'll replace R2 with some combination of R2 and R1 so as to get rid of the x. So actually, R2 minus R1 will get rid of that x value. Right? So replace R2 with R2 minus R1. So use Ri goes to Ri plus a constant times the dedicated equation, the R1 equation, to remove the x's underneath. Once I've done that, I no longer have any x's. So here, I went from my original system and I got rid of the x's. So R2 was R2 minus 1 divided by 1. That's the multiplier on R1. Minus 3 divided by R1. That's the multiplier on R1. Minus 3 divided by 1. That's the multiplier on R1 for that equation. And for the last equation, minus 2 divided by the pivot value. Minus 2 divided by 1 as the multiplier on R1 to replace the last equation. Now, my first equation is dedicated for x, and therefore ignore it. Look at the remaining system. The remaining system no longer has any x's in it. It's not one less equation, but one less variable. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to repeat the same process for this smaller system. I'll pick my leading variable, y, and I'll use this equation that I'm now dedicating to solve for y to get rid of y in the equations below it. When I do that, well, R1 was dedicated, I keep it exactly the same. R2, I'm dedicating for y, so I'll keep it exactly the same. Now the R2 equation, that's the one that I'm using to get rid of the y's, so I'll multiply it by the appropriate constant so that when I add it to the next equation, I'll have zero y. Appropriate constant so that when I add it to the last equation, I get zero y. And the constants are, well, to get rid of that minus 2, it's plus 2 divided by 1. And to get rid of the y, it's minus 1 divided by 1. So I get r3 plus 2r2, r4 minus r2 to get rid of the y equation. Now I look at the system that remains. It's got z's and w's in it. I dedicate the third equation to solve for z. And I'm lucky, uh, the fourth equation doesn't have any z in it anymore, so I have nothing to do for the fourth thing. So now I switch to the last equation. Well, that one's dedicated for the w, and my system is in row echelon form, and therefore I can unravel it from the bottom up. So I'm replacing row i by row i plus the appropriate constant uh, times the dedicated equation for a variable that I'm talking about, to get rid of that uh, variable in the current row, I'm going to repeat this for all remaining equations until I'm in row echelon form. Once I'm in row echelon form, well, I know how to do that. It's back substitution. So let's run back substitution on the final system. We see w is equal to 2. The previous equation reads z equals minus 1 times on the left, minus 5 plus 2w z equals minus, multiply on z, times right inside minus 5, 
and pull the w to the other side to the right so plus 2w and plugging that together i get z equals 1. and looking at the previous equation y equals z so plugging in y equals z and combining everything i get y equals 1. go back to the previous equation so x is equal to 8 pull everything else over minus 2y minus 2z minus w and plug everything together i get x equals 2 and rewrite everything in standard form so my x y z w vector is x equals 2 y equals 1 z equals 1 w equals 2 here is the unique solution to my system i went from the original system to a row echelon form system with steps that i can undo so my two systems have the same solutions that's all right but it's a little bit clumsy and we are going to reduce the whole thing to matrix form simply look at the matrices instead of looking at the equation but there's going to be quite a surprise here what we are doing when we are looking at these operations they are combining rows in my matrices but uh, that's a linear combination of rows but a linear combination of rows I know I can express as a matrix multiplication. So let's do the same example that we just did uh, by writing it in augmented form. So here's my example that we just did. We call them rows R1, R2, R3, R4. And so what we have now in our augmented matrix, I've got the coefficients of X, Y, Z, W written in my matrix A. I've augmented it with the right hand side. And so this matrix here is my first row, second row, third row, and fourth row. What I'm doing with my operations is the following. I create new rows from the old one. Well, what did we do? We wrote the new row, R1, is equal to R1. So it uh, goes to R1. So uh, if I give it a new name, R1 tilde is equal to R1. And R1 I can write as... 1 times R1 plus 0 times R2 plus 0 times R3 plus 0 times R4. The second equation we replace by the second equation minus the first equation. So I can rewrite that as minus 1 times R1 plus 1 times R2 plus 0 R3 plus 0 R4. The next equation we replace it by row 3 minus 3 R1. That's minus 3 R1 plus 0 R2, plus 1 times R3, plus 0 R4. And similarly, for the last equation, I get minus 2 R1, plus 0 R2, plus 0 R3, plus 1 R4. Transcribed to matrix form, my new rows are equal to this matrix of coefficients, the constant terms in my expression over here, times the original rows. I get the new rows by multiplying my old rows by this matrix uh, where we judiciously chose the numbers here so that to get the zeros that we want. If I call that matrix here, if I call it E for elimination, introducing zeros, right, then what I've just said is that my new augmented form, my new equation, is this E times the old augmented form. So what we are doing, therefore, is we are starting with our original system AX. We are figuring out a matrix E that's going to put zeros wherever we want them. And we multiply that E in from the left. So we start with AX equals B. And we multiply in an E so that we get EA times X is equal to EB. The new system, therefore, has a coefficient matrix E times A that now has the zeros in them. And the right-hand side has changed in the exact same way, right? We applied the exact same operation to the B vector in the augmented matrix. We got the result correct in that respect. So here is what this looks like in our computational layout for matrix multiplication. We start with the system in augmented form, and we're going to figure out this matrix E here that's going to put zeros where we want them. And then we multiply that matrix into our original form to get the new augmented form with all of the zeros. 
So let's see, how's this going in? I start with my pivot value, 1, and I want to put zeros underneath. I want to get some multiplier on the first equation so that when I add it to the second equation, I get 0. When I add it to the third equation, I kill the 3, I get a 0. When I multiply and add it to the fourth equation, again, I get 0. So what we just done is I've transcribed the system uh, into this form but rather than look at the original system I'd like to use the numbers that I see here to figure out what to write the rule is actually quite simple when you think it through here's my original system I have dedicated the first equation here to solve for the first variable to solve for x so I have that pivot one that pivot equation is always going to be, is in the first row, it's always going to be hit by the first column. So the numbers that I want to derive are in the first column of that E matrix. Everything else, if you look, is just the identity matrix. So let's start. To get rid of the 1, no, the rule was minus 1 divided by the pivot. So write the minus 1 in here. To get rid of the 3, the rule was minus 3 divided by the pivot value. So write the minus 3 in. The rule is minus 2 divided by the pivot value. Write in a minus 2. Now I've got the matrix that I have to multiply in. Let's see what we get for the first row. It's an instruction set. 1 times the first row, plus 0 second row, plus 0 third row, plus 0 the fourth row, well, that's 1 times the first row. Copy in the first row. So we copy it. This one reads minus 1 times row 1 plus row 2. So row 2 minus row 1 plus 0 plus 0. Second row minus the first row. 1 minus 1, 0. 3 minus 2, 1 minus 2, minus 1. 1 minus 1, 0. 8 minus 8, 0. We got the new second equation. If you check above it, the transcription that we had, it's 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, minus 2, 1, etc. Uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, minus 2, 1, etc. So just to finish it off, the last equation reads minus 2 times the first row, plus 0 times the second row, plus 0 times the third row, plus the fourth row. Fourth row minus 2 times the first row. Fourth row, 2, minus 2 times the first row. 2, minus 2, 0. 5, minus 2 times 2 is 4, 1. 3, minus 4, minus 1. 3, minus 2, plus 1. 18, minus 16, plus 2. So, in matrix form, therefore, once we get used to it, and we will very quickly because we'll do this from here on out, it's actually quite simple. So what I'd like to ask you is to stop the video here and to figure this out. Take paper and pen and go over it one more time. And you might want to look at partitioning of the matrix multiplication in lecture three maybe, but understanding that these elementary operations can be encoded as matrix multiplication and how to get these matrices, that's crucial. And that will, once you figure that out, that takes you through the first half of the course. So I'm giving you some suggestions as to questions to ask yourself as you do this to try and help you along. What you have to do is the operations that you're trying to encode, rewrite them by putting zero times the remaining rows and writing them in matrix form. So let's look at it again. Matrix multiplication for the second step above. The second step, if you look at it, went like this. We had a system, we already got rid of the x variables. And now we have the smaller system, R2, R3, R4, that we still have to deal with. And so no more x variables, but a y variable. And we wanted to get rid of y underneath, and we did that with the following operations. Here are the R values written out. We said R1 goes to R1. So R1 goes to, in terms of the old R's, 
1 times R1 plus 0 R2 plus 0 R3 plus The second equation, R2, goes to R2. We are not touching it in this step at all. We dedicated this equation for Y. So the new R2 is the old R2. 0 R1 plus 1 R2 plus 0 R3 plus 0 R4, so just R2. The next equation, R3, we want to get rid of the minus 2. So plus 2 divided by 1. So add 2 times the second equation. That makes it 2y minus 2y. That gives me the 0. So I want to replace the third row by the third row plus 2 times the second row. So apply 0r1 plus 2r2 plus 1r3 plus 0r4. And uh, a similar reasoning gives me the last equation. So when I look at these instructions, the coefficients here give me the matrix that I need to multiply in. Here is how to look at the matrix equation and read it out directly. We have dedicated the first row already. We are going to use this pivot, the y multiplier, this guy, to get rid of the y entries below. The pivot is in the second row. It always multiplies the second column of that elimination matrix of the R's over here. So I'm going to have that second where I have to figure out column. numbers. Everything else is the identity matrix. Now let's see. To get rid of minus 2 using that pivot 1, it's plus 2 divided by the pivot. So we write plus 2 in here. To get rid of the plus 1 here, it's minus 1 divided by the pivot. So we write minus 1 in. We're done. We have figured out that matrix by just looking here at the entries in the column, the entries that we want to zero on. Now we carry out what this instruction set tells us. 1 times the first row, plus 0 times the second, 0 times the third, 0 times the fourth, simply says copy in the first row. 1, 2, 2, 1, 8. 1, 2, 2, 1, 8. The next equation, 0 times first row, 1 times the second row, 0, 0, fourth. Oh, copy in the second row. 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0. 2 times the second row, add it to the third row. Third row plus 2 times the second row. Third row plus 2 times the second. 0 plus 2 times 0. Minus 2 plus 2. 1 minus 2. Minus 2 plus 0. Minus 5 plus 2 times 0. Gives us the third row, and indeed we got the 0. Finally, the last instruction says last row minus the second row. Last row minus the second row. 0 minus 0. 1 minus 1. Minus 1 plus 1. 1 minus 0. 2 minus 0. And that yields the last row. So, that's how to encode the second step. If I combine all of this and do a complete example, and this is probably the last time I'll write out uh, both forms of the computation, look on the left first. I'll use the equation form. So here's my system. It's these four equations. I'll call them R1, R2, R3. Run the algorithm. We'll pick uh, our 2x to solve for x. So the first row is going to be dedicated to solve for x. I want to get rid of the x's and the So I want to take the second equation and replace it with the second equation times the constant. Well, let's see. I want to get rid of the 2, so it's minus 2 divided by the pivot. That's minus 1. So the second row minus the first row. 1 times R2 minus 1 times R1 plus 0 R3 plus when I carry that out, so copy the second equation minus the first equation gets rid of it. Similarly, to get rid of the minus 4 here, it's plus 4 divided by 2, so plus 2 times the first equation, plus 2 times R1. To get rid of the 4x, it's minus 4 divided by the pivot, it's minus 4 divided by 2 is minus 2. Minus 2 times R1 added to the current row. Now I've got my smaller system. But the first equation is dedicated to x. I'm looking at the next set of equations here. I'm going to solve that one for y. So I'm dedicating this second row to y, and I'm going to use that second row to get rid of the y's underneath. 
Well, there's only one to get rid of, unlucky. Uh, but let's write out what that means. First row stays the same. Row 1 is row 1, so zero, zero, zero. Second row we now use is now dedicated. We'll copy it in. So 0 times the second row plus 1 times the first row plus 1 times the second row plus 0 plus 0. So we copy it in the second row. The third equation should be a replacement of the third equation with the pivot equation here, with the pivot row, uh, so that I get a zero. Minus times minus is plus one divided by two. So I have to add in the second row. So the third equation is the third equation plus the second equation. The last one I don't need to change, so it's just zero, zero, zero plus R4. Copy in R4 exactly as is. So now I've got this system here. Finally, I'll look at the remaining two rows, and I'll use the Z here. I'll dedicate the third row to solve for Z. I'm going to use that Z to get rid of the Z underneath. So plus 3 divided by minus 1 is a multiplier of minus 3 on the third row. Here it is, minus 3 the third row, added into the fourth row, gives me my system in row echelon. Okay, here it is, streamlined. I start with my augmented matrix. I dedicate the two. I want to keep the two and use it with zeros underneath. The pivot is in the first row. Therefore, my E matrix has numbers in the first column. Everything else is the identity. Let's figure out the numbers. We get a zero here using the two above. It's minus two divided by two. It's minus one. All right, minus one. To get a zero into four, where I currently have minus four, it's minus minus four, that's plus four divided by two, that's plus two. Right, plus two in here. To get rid of that four here, it's minus four divided by two, that's minus two, so we write minus two in here. And now we carry out those multiplications. This instruction set here, one zero zero zero, says one times the first row, plus zero plus zero plus zero, so just the first row. Copy in the first row. 24868, 24868. Second instruction set reads minus the first row plus the second row. Oh, second row minus the first row. 2 minus 2, that's 0. 5 minus 4, 1. 11 minus 8, 3. 7 minus 6, 10 minus 8 is 2. Carried out the instruction set, and if you compare, 0, 1, 3, 1, 2. 0, 1, 3, 1, 2, exactly as expected. Uh, the next equation, row 3 plus 2 times row 1. Third row plus 2 times the first. Third row plus 2 times the first. Minus 4 plus 4, 0. Minus 9 plus 8, minus 1. Minus 20 plus 16. Minus 12 plus 12. Minus 17 plus 16 minus 1. Same for the last row here. It reads R4 minus 2 times R1. So fourth row minus 2 times the first row. 4 minus 2 times 2 is minus 4 gives me the 0. 8 minus 8 is 0 gives me 0. 13 minus 16 that's minus 3. 18 minus 12 that's 6. 22 minus 16, that's 6. So now I have my smaller system, this one over here. So now I'm looking at the leading variable here in the second row. Here's my pivot, 1, 1 times y. Uh, what I'm going to do, therefore, is I'm going to use that 1 to get rid of the values in between. Pivot is in the second row, therefore I have to figure out the second column. Uh, in my E matrix, and everything else in that E matrix is the identity. To get rid of that minus 1, it's minus minus 1 divided by the pivot. It's plus 1. So write plus 1 in here. 0, we are not going to change. Leave it at 0. Carry out this multiplication here, and the only thing that changes is this row over here. It says second row plus third row. So add the second row to the third row. 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0 that we wanted, 3 minus 4 is minus 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1.
everything else. Uh, so let's see, pivot, pivot. This time, this is my new pivot in the next row, minus one. And I want to use it to get rid of that minus three over here. Pivot now is in the third row, therefore the third column is where we have to figure out. And we only want to get rid of this guy, so this number here. We get rid of minus three, it's minus times minus is plus three divided by minus one. It's minus three, so we write in minus three, and carry out the operations. Carry out, copy in the first row, copy in the second row, copy in the third row. Minus 3 times the third row plus the fourth row. Fourth row minus 3 times the third. Fourth row minus 3 times the third. Zero minus 3, zero. Zero minus 3 times uh, minus 3 plus 3, that's the zero we want. 6 minus 3, that's 3. And 6 minus 3 is. And my matrix is in row echelon 1. So, once we get the hang of it, this is quick. The next step, of course, is the transcription, the back substitution, that, and we'll look at directly at that matrix. So I really need to decorate it x1, x2, x3, x4, uh, but when I do, decorating it, I get last equation, 3 times x4 is equal to 3. So uh, read it out, x4 is equal to 1 over 3, 1 over the pivot, times the right-hand side. Uh, 1 over 3 times 3 is 1. The x3 value, uh, the z value, is z is equal to, I have to divide out the pivot, so minus 1 times, open parent, right hand side, uh, minus w. So z is minus 1 times 1 minus w. Equal. And then uh, the y equation, y is equal to divide out the pivot. Well, that's one that doesn't make a change. Right hand side is two minus three z minus one w. Two minus three z minus w comes out as minus one. And finally, the first equation. We'll have to divide out the pivot. So x is equal to one half times right hand side eight minus four y minus eight z minus six w. 1 half times 8 minus 4y minus 8z minus 6w. Plug everything together, you get 3. Rewrite in standard form the solution xyzw is equal to 3 minus 0. The takeaway for this we have three elementary operations that uh, we need, and we've only used the first one so far. The other two we will want for corner cases in the next lecture. But there are these three operations. The take a row, add a constant times a row to it. The second operation is interchange two rows. And the third operation is multiply a row by a constant. And the big realization was that these operations here, based in terms of rows, can be represented by matrices that we multiply into our augmented matrix. And finally, the computation can be streamlined by applying these matrix uh, multiplications to the augmented form of the system. Simply carrying out the stack of multiplications with judiciously chosen matrices.